now looking at him with a microscope like oh this is like i'm good now i'm good now mm -hmm. if we really if we if if more cis women would give the men the space to like something different i think a lot of the shame and a lot of the things that we deal with as trans women were kind of de deplenished because if you think about it if you like oh I like damn since you fly and you around another girls and he didn't find out and he know the other girls know if the other girls are more supportive that are cis women he gonna feel way more comfortable that's like the whole notion of cis women like i wouldn't date a gay man um if i found out if he was dealing with somebody gay or a man prior to me but i'm like why sis what he did before you ain't even none of your business quite frankly so why are we and you now he's looking at you he's attracted to you he's wanting you it's okay if he liking whoever he's liking like come on like it's you what we doing here hey pretty <laughs> I'm to walk in. what did my uh, friend Ronnie say cis women are so much of the problem as cis men because they is the very reason we need to do better yeah her and I hey look Chris we was um literally like we literally, her and I, my friend, that's my friend, Ronnie, we literally was having this conversation last night about how important it is for cis women also to stand up and be like, yo, these are our sisters. They're not competition. They're not somebody that we got to worry about. Because if you, we talk about a lot of women, we'll feel like you another person that's going to keep me from have, being with the man that I want to have. Nah, sis, that's a personal problem. You got to do right. the work to get the man that you want correct right. it's out nobody else you got to do right. the work head of the universe you setting the signals that's going to draw the man that's for you sis it's somebody right. I can, everybody all right as women are not another obstacle for y'all to not get the rare man that's not around because we know a lot of black men is in lack right. black men are in in lack so they look at it so they intimidated by that but sis girl look look you i would have take your position any day give me your period any day sis <laughs> that's always the argument for women though but that's the, always the argument you ain't no woman because you ain't got no period it's like it is, they're working on that i know i know i don't think i'm a, i ain't gonna that's that's a little bit much for me Cause my whole thing is, I, I tell my women all the time, like, listen, the only difference, the only difference between a trans woman and a cis woman, God gave you guys the ability to bring forth life to this world. And it don't mean when that woman is doing that, she's gonna be the best mother possible. Cause look at all the abandoned children. That's where we come in. We have nurturing spirits too yet we can't birth but we can be someone's mother we literally and we we can nurture people the same way a natural cis woman can y'all just have the ability and the tools to birth it ain't about the genitals it ain't about none of that it's about the energy that this person is producing the spirit that this person has and the way they feel on the inside it's never about the shells. These shells that we are walking in on this earth are simply shells. Mm -hmm. This is going to go away, but that spirit going to live forever. And honey, you ain't going to tell me this thing up in here ain't... Baby, you're not going to tell me. I don't care what I got between my legs. Nobody can tell me how I truly, deeply feel inside. Because, sis, I can't look at you and be like, nah, sis, you ain't happy today. Nah, that ain't the feeling that you got. You angry today. How the fuck you gonna tell me how I feel inside? Like, and and you know, people tend to do that though. They'll be like, What's wrong with you? Like, no, I'm reading. Nothing's wrong with me. Calm down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what the what is having an off day. Like, so what? Yeah, yeah. And it's <laughs> crazy as I I've, I've been going in a rant. I don't even know what the base question was, but that's how that's that just lets you know how vast right oh late 
layered. It's 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 just so layered. But we gotta continue to have the conversation around it. Right. So this and we don't have to do it. we ain't even look, it's so deep, we ain't even got into what we came here to talk about. <laughs> It's like, okay, so since we talked about this, let's get to this. Right, let's right. But nah, like, take the opportunity, please. Go ahead. Ask. Ask. So sex. Because you know that's my thing. What? Say that again. Sex. Okay. So, wait, so wait. Sex, sex as a trans, you know, I... Okay, this is why I'm so enthused with um, trans lifestyle. I don't know if you guys use other terms, but I like to say just lifestyle to keep it like general and not offend people. But I actually worked on a floor where I got to see like, you know, the genitals and all mm -hmm. the changes that people would make. And I must say, they look amazing. Women and male. I've seen them all. So isn't it amazing that I look at it like this. Cis women get the ability to birth, but trans women get the ability to build the perfect body. And we get the perfect ability to truly build identity. Where it, instead of, I think that's the trade-off. And that's just my quirky way of looking at it. That's just the trade-off. Like, I get, I was able to pick the name, pick the identity, pick the style, pick all of that. Whereas natural cis women are, you know, it's it's laid out for them in a way. Yeah, so I think that's the trade off. That's that's the that what that's to me that's what makes us even. We get to pick y'all gonna have coochies and have babies and we get to decide how we're gonna present ourselves. How it's gonna look baby and how it's gonna feel and all that good stuff. Yeah. Um, but sex with a trans woman, it's amazing. You know, like the possibilities are there. that's that's the beautiful thing about it. The I wanna know the depths, like you know, um let's say lubrication, like how does the lubrication work? I don't think I ever got into the details of how it lubricates. Now I did get the breakdown of how everything goes and how they make it work and turn it the vagina into a penis and turn a penis into the vagina like i already know how that works so now how about the function and how things work and feel for you afterwards well, what was I, your difference I, before and after me personally i can't speak for that because mm -hmm. i don't have a brand new cadillac okay she's been untouched so she's 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 been untouched like um if it ain't broke don't fix it that's my mentality um so i can't speak to that like i know a home girl and it i think it's different for each individual like you know some have complications some don't right have a long canal some don't right it's just not for, i'm not gonna do it because it's just not for me i don't i'm totally fine with literally how she is i'm totally fine with it and i can live on that side yeah i ain't getting a cut i ain't getting a surgery but uh, yeah i don't i i don't work but my lubrication is fine it's fine it, it's fine and it really honestly what it depends on it depends on the guy if the guy can get me there right it gets very it gets very <laughs> nice <laughs> It gets nice. <laughs> I'll just say that. So talking about that liberation. Oh, hold on one second. Hold oh, on. How liberated did you feel after? After what? The change. What change are we talking specifically? Everything. Everything. When you made the decision, when you made the decision, it changes. What, how, how liberated did you feel? Was there a difference for you? Uh, of course, it was a difference. Yeah, of course, I. It, uh, it's almost like you just have the ability to okay. choose your life and just stand for whatever and however you believe. You're just able to be who you are. In a lot of, it, it's it's just like having. 
it's literally just like coming out of a cage and you really ain't got to worry about being so trapped or what people think. Because you even still have to go, even when you decide to step out. Because I remember the last day I put on a boy item. I remember the last day I wore guy clothes. And I was said to myself that that day I just was like, I would never. <laughs> Passionate. Passion. I was like, I would never put on a piece of boy clothes ever again because it's just like weighing me down. <laughs> and when I did that, it just was like, huh, now I can I can wear these. I yeah, got a high. I'm me now. I'm me now. And you know, that's a hard thing for people to grasp that concept because they're like, no, nah, this is what you are. Okay. Like, it's really hard for somebody to say, hey, I'm a Cadillac, and they not, they like, nah, you a Honda. You a Honda. You a Honda. But who like, are we? Oh, you don't know me. Period. So who are you to tell me how I really feel and what I am? So it was very liberating. Like, but what's so beautiful about the process is, as I'm getting older, like I'm 37 years old right now, and I realize each year that I go by, honey, I see I sit so deeply and rooted in who I am as a person and my voice is growing every day to stand up and say like yeah I'm trans cuz that used to be a whole like oh like that used to terrify me right <laughs> even to say my dad name Jamal I would never ever ever say that name until recently maybe like 2 years ago or maybe like last year I was on a live on Facebook and I was, you know, interacting with the people that was viewing the live and I freed it. I started saying the name and I just like burst out into tears because what I realized in that moment, whatever I was talking about, it made me realize that I have to honor who he was. Right. And because I was suppressing him so much because I was trying to get to this type of woman. When, but I, when I realized, as soon as I started realizing and accepting, he still lives in me. Not saying that that's, it's, and it's only spiritually. Right. It's like, I have to honor who that person was because that person in the physical realm got me to the point where I got to where I am. So right. once I start honoring him, and once I started calling his name Jamal, it just like a lot of a lot of wall just fell down and crumbled. And my light was able to shine a little bit more and I'm able to speak. So the process is is it's getting so much better. And honestly, to tell you the truth, dead ass, my outer beauty is getting better and better and better and better and better because I'm sitting in the pussy juices. With what? no problem. I'm never there yet. I'm telling you. So, and I'm not ashamed to even say that around my parents or around anybody else because it's not that it's vulgar. It's just the truth. And if more women and more people would accept that raw humanness, that raw experience, experience that we have, baby, you would be better off. You would yeah. be better off. So, yeah, I like my pussy. Like, did you have any, I don't know, anything that you felt like people needed to know? People need to know. People need to understand, uh, you know, I um, guess how to, like, love people like you or if somebody in their family or a friend decides to go that route, how to accept and just live and let live and be supportive. I think the biggest message that I'm going to say to that is how you do that is mind your own fucking business. Period. You literally can only be in control of what your shit is. The moment you can just start accepting your shit, you can start accepting everybody else's shit. Right. And that be the main problem with people that feel like they have so much to say about trans individual or gay individuals or whatever the case may be. Why you so worried? Why you so worried about what I got going on? Are we doing it together? Right. Are we involved, sir? 
if we not involved and if this ain't what you want, carry your ass on. Or if this is what you want.